Hello and welcome to this Red Game and Tech video, myself Marta, but as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. I hope you all have had a lovely weekend. It's been rather blustery here in England. Anywho, today we are going to keep things off with a little something from Microsoft and Augmented Reality. Now you may recall not that long ago I discussed the unveiling of HoloLens 2, which of course brought numerous improvements specs-wise to the table, most importantly the increase in the field of view, but of course we also saw increase in the price tag as well, which is pretty impressive when you remember that the original HoloLens was also $3,000, so we did not see a reduction, but an increase there. And Microsoft were honest about the fact that, look, this, this isn't for the average consumer, this is for businesses, and they also signed a contract with the US military, and obviously, again, is going to be for the very high-end sort of prosumer but mostly it's going to be for businesses. And they did say that we might start to see consumer level price tags for HoloLens 3, but it might even be beyond that. And we see some comments to that effect by the Director of Communications over at Microsoft, one Greg Sullivan, who has basically said that he believes that the consumer adoption of AR technology could take years. And he believes that HoloLens 2 is always going to be remaining as an enterprise level device. And he was asked if they have any plans for a consumer level device similar to HoloLens 2, or even if it's going to be HoloLens 3, but obviously with less features and cheaper. Unfortunately, they have nothing to announce at this time, which doesn't mean they're not working on anything. Working on anything, I should say, sorry. It just means they have nothing to announce. So basically, while Microsoft have been honest about this with the release of HoloLens 2, that yeah, it's not a consumer level product, but we might see it with HoloLens 3, this kind of lines up with that. So that we're, it's, we're years away from seeing an AR device aimed at the average consumer. Now I do have a direct quote from Sullivan here which says, quotes the way we think about it, I think it was echoed by Tim Sweeney's statement last night, is that the consumer journey is probably measured in years. That said, we've confirmed that our belief that mixed reality is at large to some degree the future of the interaction model. We think it is profound value in freeing the digital world from these flat screens that have been trapped in for decades and bringing it into the real world with us. Now, of course, the original HoloLens did have some gaming applications despite its high cost, which, of course, led to some to believe that we would see a cheaper version of it. Obviously, that never happened, but there was a good reason for this, according to Greg Sullivan, who said, quote, in part, we didn't exactly know where the highest return on investment and value would be for this device. But it's also true that the middleware and tools and expertise in creation digital content largely resided in the gaming industry. And so the knowledge and the tools and the expertise to do 3D digital things came from the gaming side. But the long story short is we are quite a few years away from ever seeing an AR device on a consumer level shelf. But that is not exactly surprising given that we are seeing the price increase for these devices rather than decrease. Now, obviously, the quickest way for Microsoft to get these devices to us for HoloLens 3 uh, would be to just create a sort of light version of it, stripped of some of the features that perhaps is not going to be all that useful to a average consumer that is more designed for the prosumer and perhaps you know, reduce some of the specs and that sort of thing as well. But, of course, that is pure speculation on my part. Next up, we're going to move over to a report from Reuters regarding Mellanox and NVIDIA. So, it seems NVIDIA are competing for the Israeli chip designer Mellanox with Intel. And NVIDIA has submitted an offer to buy the company according to the sources of Reuters.com. Now, again, Intel are also in bidding for this company, and they in themselves have offered $6 billion, according to, again, the sources of Reuters. And apparently, NVIDIA are going to be paying at least 10% more than the price currently offered by Intel. Now, for those of you wondering, okay, that's all great and all, what does Mellanox actually do? Well, they make chips and other hardware for data center servers that power cloud computers. Computing. So obviously this is again going to be probably for self-driving cars, AI, neural network learning, all that good stuff that NVIDIA do does love to talk about at all their conferences. Unfortunately, they did not comment on any of these speculations, and Intel has also declined to comment on the fact on whether or not they're even bidding for the company. So it would obviously be a huge boon for either Intel or NVIDIA to actually get their hands on this company, but would probably be even more treasured by Intel, given that, of course, AI and all that sort of stuff is very much where it's at, at the very tip-top 
end of the scale when it comes to processors. But of course, NVIDIA love all that deep learning and all that sort of stuff as well, as I've already said. So they wouldn't exactly be shy about acquiring them either. So not saying it's going to tip the scales or upset the balance or anything like that, but it is definitely going to be interesting to see which one of these companies actually managed to get their hands on them. Assuming, of course, that they are indeed bidding for them. This is according to the sources of Reuters, but I'll be surprised if they're not given the wealth of knowledge and Lord knows what patents and stuff they have as well that are going to be up for grabs over at Mellanox. Next up, we've got a couple of things to discuss from Camp AMD, and the first of which is actually going to be a bit of an update about those BIOS updates that Paul recently discussed. So let me give you a bit of TLDR on this before I actually get into the topic itself. If you did miss Paul's video, I would suggest you watch it for the full lowdown on what's going on here, but essentially the TLDR is that was a microcode updates for MemSI boards that added support for upcoming AMD processors, but these were most likely for the upcoming AMD Athlon CPUs rather than for Zen to Matisse, but what's very interesting is that according to sources, new microcode has appeared for the in the BIOS, should I say, of some Asus and BioStar boards. Now these could, and I do stress, it could be for Matisse. So this is possible, but not actually confirmed. So it is a possibility, but again, we do not know for sure what is actually going on. And the CPU ID we actually see in these BIOS updates is CPU ID 00870F00H. So again, this is possible that it's Matisse, but once again, not confirmed. But we do have another AMD thing for you today, as we have a alleged listing for the Ryzen 3600. Now, essentially what we have here is a listing for the Ryzen 5 3600 processor on the website Outlet PC. Now, this is a well-known retailer. It is a real store. But what is actually interesting, well, there's a few things interesting here, is if you look at the screen right about now, you will see that the specs are, well, rather vague to say the least. We see 6 to 10 cores expected and a clock speed of between 3.6 GHz and 4.5 GHz expected. So there's a few things that could possibly be going on here. The first of which is they are deliberately not revealing information that they do have access to in order not to tick off AMD. But you could also argue that the more likely scenario is that they are intentionally being vague because, well, they want the, that them backlinks and that traffic, basically. Now, again, this is a real store that sells real products, so there's not an issue of being a fake store or anything like that. But I just say that I would not put any stock at all in these specs given how vague they actually are. Now, what's also interesting is that if you search for the Ryzen 3600 just on their website, this does not come up. However, if you search for the 2600, it comes up just fine. To actually get to the page which is going to be linked below, you have to do a Google search to actually reach it. Make of that what you will, my friends. But again, well, the Ryzen 5 3600 most likely exists, I would not put much credence in the specs. The price tag does seem more on the money as to what we might expect, $249.89, but again, that might just be a placeholder price tag based on the previous generation. It may or might not be based on actual information. It's really hard to tell, but I'm, I'm skeptical put any trust in it just due to the fact that the specs listed are obviously extremely vague, to put it politely. Obviously, I would say most of this is a placeholder listing, and it's a fairly safe bet that in the Ryzen 5 3000 series, we are going to see a Ryzen 5, and it is most likely going to be including a 3600, and maybe even a 3600X as well. But, yeah. Wouldn't make too much of those specs, is basically a long story short on that one. Anywho, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.